Welcome home, everyone. You're watching Legacy Television. I'm Jeremy Pearsons. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune into this broadcast today and get the Word of God into your eyes, your ears, into your heart. That's when it begins to make a difference in your life. And Jesus said, anybody who would come to Him, hear His Word, and then, listen to this, be a doer of that Word. He said, that's the person who's building their life on a solid rock, on a firm foundation. And that's what this ministry is all about. And man, we have got a word from God for our lives, for this congregation, for the partners of our ministry. And it comes straight out of the book of John chapter 10, verse 10. Jesus said, the thief doesn't come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. What is that? That's taking from you. But he said, in contrast to that, I've come that you'd have life and have it more abundantly. That's getting something to you. And that's the word of the Lord to us as a church family, as a partner family for 2021. And the Lord spoke to us as last year began to close and this year began to dawn. He said, this year you are going to start living life more abundantly. So whatever's been taking from you, if you'll lay hold of this word, that's coming to a stop. That's coming to a close. And if you'll, if you'll believe this and begin to walk in it, you'll see that Jesus is wanting to add to you in this year and in the coming years in ways maybe you've never experienced before. But it starts with hearing His Word. And that's what we're going to do together today on this broadcast. As a matter of fact, in just a moment, I'm going to take you into a Sunday morning church service from right here at Legacy Church, Green Mountain Falls, Colorado, where we're talking more about this word. Because if Jesus said, I came that you'd have more life, that should indicate a couple of things to you right away. Number one, that must mean there's more to this life than what I'm already experiencing. Just having a, a beating heart in my chest is a good thing, but there's got to be more to life than just having a pulse. Because Jesus said this to people who were up walking around Probably people who thought, hey, I'm living life. He said, no, there's more to it. There's more life available to you. And if you've ever th thought or said to yourself, man, there's got to be more to life. There's got to be more to life. The reason you're thinking that is because there's more to life. But you have to know where to go to find it. And we look to the word of God because his word is alive. His word is life. And his word we're going to talk about this in the broadcast today, is like a seed. And that seed has life in it and is able to reproduce and is able to bear fruit. But you got to know to come to His Word. That's what we're going to talk about in this broadcast today. We're celebrating the good things that God's done here at Legacy Church. We are thanking Him that we have finished up our at least the first phase of our building project. Glory to God, the doors are open People are coming. This church is filling up week after week after week. And if you have sown into this project, no matter who you are or where you are, we want you to know that you're welcome here. Come see what God's doing and what He's done with your faithfulness and your seeds of faith and love. And we want you to, to, to get a first, first-hand eyewitness of the good things our good God is doing. And though we have finished up this first phase in this project, we still want to give you opportunity to sow today into the ongoing outreach of Legacy Television, Pearson's Ministries International, and now Legacy Church. Um, our assignment is to serve our generation with the Word of God. Teach them how to live by faith in the day of grace. Teach people how to experience a whole life prosperity. That's prospering, not just materially, not financially. That's included, but a whole life prosperity is where you prosper and thrive, spirit, soul, and then in your body. And we also have an assignment to teach families how to raise their family in the household of faith. And if that assignment burns in your heart, and if you hear that and that quickens something on the inside of you, that means you and I are called to be partners in getting this thing done. So if you want to sow into this vision, into this assignment, then you can do that. And there's a number of ways today you can get involved. Number one, you can sow online at pearsonsministries.com. Or if you are watching inside the United States and you'd like to text your offering, you can do that. It's safe. It's simple. It's secure. Just text LTV and any dollar amount to the number 28950. If you'd like to make a check, 
Uh, you can make it payable to Pearson's Ministries International or PMI. Use the address that you see right there on your screen and that's going to go into the ongoing outreaches of this ministry and this television broadcast. Father, we thank you for the giving of the people today. We receive it from a heart of faith, a heart of love, and we call them blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, let's get into the word. Before we get into the message, Sarah's got some amazing glory stories to share with you today. Listen to the good things that our good God is doing in the lives of people. Let it stir faith in you to believe to receive that same outpouring of his goodness. And we'll get into the word. I want to share with you some glory stories this morning. Are you excited? These are awesome things that God is doing in the Legacy Church family. Um, this one is from a 10-year-old in our Adventure Club kids. And she writes in and says, one morning I woke up at 3 a.m. with throat pain. I have had it, I had had it for a couple of days and I swallowed and I could just feel it. This is so cute. She said, I looked in the mirror and I said, no sickness or disease can come on my body. And I remembered that 2021 is the end of sickness and disease and the beginning of life more abundantly. <laughs> now, you know they're learning the same thing in kids' class that we're learning in here. You should, now every week I go over the lessons that they send me. They are so powerful. They are memorizing scripture. They are getting the word of God. They are worshiping. We have our worship team. We'll go and minister to them right after they're in this service. Your children are getting fed the word of God that is changing their life. I know you can already tell some of you at home. Anyway, she says, 2021 is the end of sickness and disease and the beginning of life more abundantly. And then I went back to bed. When I woke up to get ready for school, I had no more throat pain. <laughs> I truly believe that 2021 is the end of sickness and disease and the beginning of life more abundantly. Glory to God. Glory to God. Open your Bible with, you, with me this morning to the book of John chapter 10. You probably guessed that by now. John chapter 10. Verse 10, Jesus is speaking, and he said, The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come, Jesus said, that they may have life and that they may have it, say it with me, more abundantly. More abundantly. You spend some time studying out these words and you really get a picture of what Jesus said his whole purpose in coming was and what it was all about. This, this life more abundantly, it has to do, when you look it up, it, it, it deals with beyond. It deals with the word excessive, too much. And you can almost just in that alone begin to see why there's been such a spirit of opposition, really it's just a religious spirit that fights that concept and idea of too much. Religion's always been about trying to give everybody a little. But that was never the intent behind Jesus coming for you and for me. He said, I came that you'd have life and have it more abundantly. The Amplified Bible says, to the full until it overflows. Overflows just too much. Too much. It's a concept that a lot of people aren't very comfortable with, but I would say get comfortable. I would say change that attitude, change that mentality. But like you've heard us say before, what we need to understand is that the problem is not excess. The problem has been not knowing what to do with it, not knowing what the excess is for. And when Jesus said he came that, that you and I would have life and have it more abundantly, he could have said anything there. I came that you'd have peace and have it more abundantly. I came that you'd have healing and have it more abundantly. But he, instead of using a specific word like that, he used a word that covered everything. I came that you'd have life and have so much life that you are full of that life and you overflow with that life. And then the purpose behind the excess and the overflow is that you find somebody to give it to. Amen. 
you find somebody to give what you've got. Somebody to give what you've got. You see that in the book of Acts when Peter and John were walking up to the temple. And there was a man that had been laid there. He's a 40-year-old man, and he was laid there every single day because he was lame, and he laid there to beg alms from the people that were going in. And he looked at Peter and John, and he begged from them, and Peter said to him, Silver and gold have I none. You ever left your wallet at home? (laughs) But what I do have, he said, what I do have, I'm going to give to you. Now, that's Acts chapter 3. You Bible scholars tell me, as of Acts chapter 2, what is it Peter's got? The Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God on him, in him, working through him, overflowing out of him. And that's what he's saying. What I do have, what I've got an overflow of, what I've got excess. I got too much Holy Ghost just for me. Let me give you some. And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise and walk. But I like the next part. It says he grabbed him by the hand. This was not optional. This was not, do you feel like getting up? What do you think? Can you raise your hand if you can sense a difference? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And he picked him up. And it says immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he went walking and leaping and praising God. He got some of the excess some of the overflow of the life that Peter and John had in them. That's what the excess is for. That's what the overflow is all about. The New Living Translation of John 10, 10, Jesus said, the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. That just simply means take away. The thief comes into our lives to take. Excuse me. But Jesus said, I might need that water, Sarah. My purpose is, is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Remember, we talked about that several weeks ago. Thank you. That Jesus' purpose in coming was to give you and I a rich and satisfying life. And you can tell just by the quietness that fills the room that people are like, am I allowed to say amen to that? I mean, rich and satisfying? We've been taught for generations and years that these are bad words. That R-I-C-H is a four-letter word. But Jesus said this was his purpose. And like you've heard us say over and over, we've got to go to work and let the word of God renew our minds and redefine what it actually means to be rich. It's so much bigger than we've known. It's so much deeper. It's so much wider than we've known. And I used to do this quite a bit as we would travel I'd stand in front of a crowd like this and I'd say, a prosperous person is somebody who's got a lot of, and it's like they'd all rehearsed it together, money, they'd say, because that's what's on people's mind. That to them is the definition of prosperity. And I'd look at them and I'd say, that's interesting. Why didn't you say peace? Why didn't you say wisdom? Because these are just a couple of the things that the, the Word of God tells us are actually worth more than gold. See, we got to redefine what it means to be rich. Thank you, Lord. And that's what Jesus is helping us do and see here, that in, it, to recognize His purpose was for you and I to have a rich and satisfying life, that we'd have life and have it more abundantly. I want you to go to the book of John. Well, you're in John. Back up just a couple of chapters to chapter 6. In John chapter 6, we looked at this, I think it's been a couple of weeks ago, but you remember, John chapter 6 is an amazing chapter to me. It's a long chapter, and it needs to be because of everything that goes on in it. Jesus goes from one end of the spectrum to the other. It starts with him feeding thousands and thousands of people. And then it goes to that that group of thousands, that great multitude, tracking him down. And by the end of the chapter, all those thousands of people that were tracking him down and wanting to find him and wanting to hear him had turned their backs and walked away. And the Bible says, walked with him no more. In one chapter. This was a major day in the life and the ministry of Jesus. He went from being very popular, very sought after, to thousands of people abandoning him. That was a big day. 
But one of the things <clears throat> that they really got hung up on, <clears throat> excuse me, was what Jesus said when he began to talk to them about the bread that came from heaven. Remember we talked about this? He, he fed them, and then overnight he goes away, and they track him down the next day, and they said, where'd you go? And he said, you're not looking for me, you're looking for another free meal. You're looking for the sign. You're looking for the wonder. And then they began to question him. Okay, well, do that thing again, well, you know, where you feed everybody. And he said, you need to be careful that you're not seeking a sign. And then they said, well, okay, well, teach us how to do the works of God. In other words, if you're not going to do it, show us how to. They, they think of him as a magician. Show us your trick. How'd you do that thing with the bread? How'd you do that thing with the fish? Teach us to do it. And Jesus said, your work is to believe. That's not what they wanted to hear. He said, your work is to believe. And they said, okay, well, how about you do a sign so that we might believe? These people think they're subtle. <laughs> they're anything but subtle. Why don't you do a sign, then we'll believe. They didn't even let him respond. They said, you know, Moses uh, gave our fathers bread from heaven. So maybe you could do that. What are they looking for? More food. More food. And Jesus began talking to them saying, that was not bread from heaven. I am bread from heaven. And it really ruffled some feathers. And by the time he got into all of it, he was explaining to them, you have to eat my flesh. You have to drink my blood. And they thought, this is weird. This is a hard saying. Who can understand this? And they turned and they walked away. But the reason they didn't understand it, you see it here in verse 63, where Jesus said, it's the spirit who gives life, the flesh profits nothing. The spirit gives life. I think other translations say the spirit quickens. He said the spirit gives life, the flesh profits nothing, the words. Everybody say the words. The words, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. I came that you'd have life and have it more abundantly. Well, like we said a week or two ago, everybody Jesus said that to was alive. Every one of them had a beating heart in their chest. So what he's saying is there's more to it. There's got to be more to this life than just a pulse. There's got to be more than this, to this life than just waking up and going to bed and doing the same thing day in, day out. There's more life available to you. And Jesus is telling us, I'm the way to that life. Unless and until you come get it from me, you will never have it. The, the thief will take anything and everything you've got. And the only way to have and enjoy this excess and overflow of life is to know where to go get it. Yeah. And that should be the first question on your mind when Jesus says, I came that you'd have life, have it more abundantly. Your next question should be, okay, where do I get it? How do I get a hold of it? Because I recognize what I'm living is not all there is. I recognize what I'm experiencing is not all there is. There's got to be more to this. So you know coming to him, but Jesus helps us see here in John chapter 6 that it's not just in coming to him, it's specifically in what he says. He said, my words are spirit and my words are life. Life. I want to take this week and next as we talk about life more abundantly, I want to focus in on the Word of God, specifically the Word of God. If there's one thing that Sarah and I desire for you to pick up from your time at Legacy Church, if there's one thing we want you to see above all else and to develop above anything else, it's a love for the Word of God. A love for God as he's revealed himself in his word. And some might say, well, don't you think loving Jesus is important? Yes, that's what I said. <laughs> but don't you think loving God is, is, is important? Uh-huh, that's what I'm talking about. A love for his word. And the recognition that his word is 
and, and carries with it the most supreme authority, that it's that there is an integrity to the Word of God, an infallibility to the Word of God. We want, as a result of your time in this church, for you to develop this first response, this first reaction, that no matter what it is you face and go through, there's a confidence that rises up in you that says, okay, the Word has something to say about this. The Word of God sets the standard for my response. The Word of God sets the standard for the way I live, for the way I talk, for the way I believe. The Word is my answer. The Word has my answer. And it's this constant running to the Word of God because you believe it is life. It's life. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. In 1 John chapter 1, he wrote and said, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. John, perhaps more than any of the other apostles, more than any of the other disciples, got such a revelation of Jesus as the word. He began to understand that the Word was not a thing. The Word was and is a person. He understood that. It's interesting to me that from the best that I can tell, there are three, or three books in the Bible that all start with in the beginning. You remember the first one, don't you? Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form, it was void, darkness was on the face of the deep. The Spirit of God hovered upon the face of the waters, and God did what? He said something. See, the Spirit of God was just hovering there, waiting, waiting for what? The Word. The Spirit doesn't move without the Word. The Spirit waits on the Word. Give me that Word. Give me that Word. I'm ready to go. You, you say the Word, and we'll do something. The Spirit of God waiting on the Word of God. And God said, light be. And light was. And everything you and I see in this creation is the result of faith-filled words. I think since moving here in the last couple of years, I have been more taken aback with creation than I've ever been in my entire life. In Texas, there was nothing to look at. <laughs> And if you ask a good Texan, they're proud of that. <laughs> we got 100 miles visibility. Yeah, because there's nothing in the way. <laughs> you take a Texan and you put him in Colorado and he says, I can't see anything. I got all these mountains in front of me. You take a Colorado and, and put him in Texas and he says, there's nothing to look at. But the Bible tells us that God is clearly seen in creation. And this, this house we found and moved into a year and a half ago, we're, we're out away just a little bit on a little bit of land, and we don't have a lot of light around us. And there are so many stars up there. I don't know if y'all knew this or not. There's a lot of stars. <laughs> Texas doesn't have as many stars. <laughs> well, I should say Dallas, Fort Worth doesn't. We've got some places in Texas where you can see about all of them. But I've just stood out there and looked. And I downloaded this app to my phone that you hold it up to the sky and it, it overlays the galaxy on it. And you can point and, and click on a star and it'll tell you about it. And for weeks on end, I just go out and I look. I'm like, there's Jupiter. There's Saturn. It's just been astounding to me. And it's not just some hobby. To me, I'm looking up into it and seeing, you talk about abundance. You talk about God himself being revealed. He chose to do it that way. Let me reveal myself to you in creation. And then I'm going to put some stuff so far out there that your brain doesn't even wrap around it. The brightest star in our sky besides the sun is called Sirius. And you know what? It's nine light years from us. Nine light years. You know what that is? It's traveling at the speed of light. 186,000 miles per second and going that fast, 186,000 miles, not an hour, a second. 
it would still take you nine years to get there. And there it is. And I just look at it, and I don't even know what to think about it other than, God, you're awesome. God, you're amazing. You're abundance. I guess he could have just put us here, but where's the fun in that? Huh? And I believe that creation and the vastness of it and the bigness of it, some people look at it and they get a, the, the, the sense they get is how small and insignificant we are. But it really should be just the opposite. When you think about how much is out there and yet all of that revolves around his love for you, that ought to reveal to you not how insignificant you are, but how precious and how valuable you are in the sight of God. Now, I said all that to say this. What put Sirius there? What put these constellations and these planets, the billions upon billions upon billions of stars, what put those there? Words did it. Words did it. That's his method of creation. It's his method of sustaining. It's his method of giving life. It's the, his method of bringing uh, life back to the dead and bringing from death to life. It all goes back to his words. His words are spirit and they are life. And there's, a bit, there's the reason right there all those people walked away from him. When he started talking about eat my flesh and drink my blood... <laughs> The problem was they couldn't hear it through spiritual ears. Thank you again for tuning into this broadcast today. We believe that if you heard the word with an open heart, then there's great change coming in your life. The, the revelation of the word of God can bring change to anybody who will believe it, anybody who will put it into practice. And that's what we want to see happen in your life. I want to put a phone number right now on our screen for you. We, we love to pray with people, love to come into agreement. And whatever it is you're facing right now, uh, the word of God has something to say about it. And we have, a, it's a small staff here, but the ones that we have love to reach back out and pray with our, our partners and anybody who wants agreement concerning anything going on in your life and we'll go to the word together. We'll find out what God has said about it. We'll come into agreement. And Jesus said, will you get two or three in agreement together? He said, there I am in the midst of them. And we'll believe that we receive a manifestation of Jesus in your life, your home, your family, and he can turn things around. And you'll be one of these ones who's writing in these glory stories, giving all the praise, all the glory to God for the good things he's doing in your life. So contact us. You can use that phone number. You can use our website. You can connect with us through our app, the Legacy Studios app. Uh, however we can be of service to you, that's what we desire to be. Make sure you tune into this broadcast again next week. Keep hearing the good word of God and let his word bring lasting change into your life. Thanks so much for watching today, everybody. We'll see you next time on Legacy TV. Bye-bye.